Keystone Mount Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters, Rick Okrzewski. A lot of exciting things to talk about. This guy, Lou Bellino, the man behind Casa de Emanuel, getting ready for another college football season, another Steelers season. And in case you haven't heard, the Steelers are going to sign tonight. Joe Hayden, two-time Pro Bowl cornerback from the Cleveland Browns. And they're saying he's going to get three years, $27 million. Way to go, Steelers. That's a great, great add to your football team. This guy in the evening review every week, he is one of the experts. So how did you do with your first week in high school football? Eight and two. Really? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. I'm two ahead. But did you pick Beaver Local to win by that much? Uh, no, I, we did straight up. I just picked Beaver Local. But uh, this week I picked Wellsville, though. I, I think Wellsville will bounce back. And the Potters have Indian Creek. Indian Creek this week. Could they be 2-0? Possibility. I, I picked in the creep though. <laughs> oh, so Jimmy Joe. Jimmy Joe is shooting this Savage Legacy Studios. Everything for the Potters, everything for high school pictures. He can do it all, ladies and gentlemen. If I ever get a real job, he can take some portraits of me. But anyway, I want to know um, about the Potters. You run the sidelines. Tell me a little bit about them. Different. Exciting. Excitement was there. Um, and the coaches, too. They were, they were trying to keep things more under control. You know, the mistakes that were made, they were bringing them over, making sure they weren't doing it again. And that's, at that level, that's what you want. So all of the water that Nate Boyd drank in the East End, boy, he's still big. I was looking at some of them pictures you shot. He's a big boy and he gets into it, don't he? He's a big boy. So he's a coach and I remember when he was a freshman actually starting at East Liverpool. So. I wish them the best of luck. Now, he's not Derek Suggs yet, the young running back from Wallsville, but Derek Carter, this kid can scoop. Tell me about him. He, he can move. You know, he's 140 pounds, but he can run. Okay. Anything else? No. Got That's entertainment it. tonight. Who's here? Uh, Buddy Snyder's here tonight. Buddy Schneider. Full house. So. It's the Buddy Schneider Show. <laughs> it's been a long day, boys. Long day. Thank you for everything. All right. I'll the great guys. Lou Valino. Right. Coming up, Dr. Terry Madonna. Top 10 campaign promises of President Trump. Can't get anything done. We're going to talk about that. Now, Rick Okrzewski, Keystone Mile Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters, 650 Ridge Road, Suite 200, Pittsburgh, PA, 412-922-6200. On a serious note, the Bruce Mansfield, the coal-fired power plant, part of First Energy, they lost some lives, and uh, we've been all thinking about it and praying about it, but I just want to make an observation. You know, you and I are old enough to remember. Stuff like that happened all the time back in the day, and we've really come a long way now with safety regulations, and everybody's doing their due diligence, but accidents do happen, and nobody plans for them, nobody hopes for them, and all we can do is to pray that they don't happen again, but you have to look at the big picture. I know the families are grieving, and my heart goes out to them, but when you are in your business of being a laborer, at times it can be dangerous. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, our industry is is packed with um, things that could happen at at, a, at, a, at an instant. And you know, whenever instance things like this happen, you know, it's very unfortunate. Um, this morning, uh, when I heard that the news, it was around four o'clock, four thirty in the morning that I heard that this had happened. You know, it just takes the wind out of you, and you know. You start wondering who was it, you know, where was it, what had happened, you know. So those kind of things are scary. Um, a lot of people don't understand the type of environment that working in a in a plant like that is, and and those types of things are uh, something that us that have worked in those areas realize how tenuous those type of jobs are and those type of things. So our prayers go out to their families. Listen, I want to talk about First Energy. You guys do a lot of work down there and they have another outage coming up in the spring. That means all hands on deck. They basically spill out of all of the union halls. And you know, First Energy, I'm a huge fan of them. And from the lights that really we all need every day and the really the price that we save when it comes to our, our monthly utility bills has a lot to do with what they do at that nuclear power plant rich history there and they have done so much to keep it safe um, including coming up next week they'll have that yearly check of the sirens that you'll be hearing in and around this area 
they test just to let everybody know that they're on the same page with you and they understand what they do is very important, but at times can be dangerous too, but they want you to know that they're there and they've got your back. So I just, I know I saw Dave Mester, who happens to work at the power plant, walking in to have a little dinner here tonight. And I just thought about taking a little bit of time because I know the headlines haven't been good. And I know that they are worried about their employees and families as well, especially with the recent news, but it's important that we just let them know how much we appreciate them. For sure, for sure. I pray to stay with them. Okay, now I wanna talk about uh, fall training classes coming up. A lot of kids out of high school getting ready to take their career to the next level. So what are you guys doing? We have a lot of work. Uh, this is probably the best work that we've ever seen, or at least I've ever seen in the years that I've been a carpenter. We are uh, actively pursuing uh, journey person carpenters uh, to fill uh, some of the, the need that we have. Our apprenticeship is continually uh, bringing in new apprentices and getting them trained up so they can have a, a prosperous and a wonderful future. And it, it's, it's bright out there. There's a lot of work out there. Uh, there's a lot of work down at the, at the cracker that, that's going on there. Our, our region is just filled with uh, housing, uh, multifamily units in, in the city of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, boatloads of, of uh, hospital work that's happening. So there's a tremendous amount of work um, in our region this, this year. Okay, I want to talk about um, welders, okay? I know it's not your expertise, but you've been a laborer sure. your whole life. Sure. You've got, you got the hands to prove it. And, the, and, the, it and the back is going <laughs> at his age as well. But you loved every minute of it. Sure. And I love all of those men and women who are working in a profession uh, that has a union card to it. Why are welders in so, so demand right now? They're looking for them at the cracker plant in a big way. Why? Yeah. Well, the, the steam fitters or the pipe fitters are going to have probably the highest uh, one source of, of need for employees. I think they're looking at around 2,200 welders at their peak. And these guys uh, have a special knack of doing some types of welding that need to happen in these plants in order to join the pipes together. So they, ha they have years and years of practice that has to happen to be able to do that. It's like, it's like a sports player. You know, these guys practice all their life to be able to play sports. And these guys that, that weld this pipe have to really be sharp at it and good at it. Um, so the welding uh, side, takes time to grow and learn. And I, you know, I've told the steam fitters, I said, just give us carpenters a, a call and maybe we can fill the bill with a few of those welders. But, you know, those guys really do, they've been actively pursuing uh, welders for the last few few months. You know, I was just thinking, I always think about my father because the property that St. Joe led, St. Joe Zinc, he worked there for 41 years. And how far we've come, they didn't even wear respirators back in the 50s there. So we've come a long way, but I remember going to those company picnics and there'd be guys, you know, my dad would be talking to them, and they'd be blinking a lot like this. I go, why is that guy blinking so much? He goes, he's a welder. <laughs> so How about it? Come a long way, Th Things man. have come a long, long way with welding. There's no doubt about it. And those guys are, they're excellent. They're excellent craftspeople. And, um, and they're in the need of them. And, and they're, they're, they're finding them. They're finding them. Our, our region will supply the workforce needed to put that plant in operation. I know you have some carpenters that do this stuff, and I love all labor, all the time, whenever I can promote it. You're gonna be with me Monday night on Labor Day, right after an hour-long special courtesy of CBS Radio from seven to eight on Labor Day. You and I are gonna talk labor. It's like a regular get-together. Can't wait to That's do right. it. Lou Gilberti, by the way, you went and retired on me. You know what, I've been looking for you. You retired on me. I thought we were going together, my brother. So I guess the first beer's on you, right? All right, listen. Um, I love highway workers, these heavy equipment operators, people who deal in concrete, iron workers. I mean, come on. I've seen them all summer long in some incredible weather, late at night, going five miles an hour, and people are slamming on the horn behind me. And I'm like, I'm not taking a chance of picking one of these great workers off who've been out here all night doing what they do in the pitch of dark. I'm driving one night, I'm at the Hopewell exit, true story. I see these little, I thought they were lightning bugs. <laughs> <laughs> These men and women had little lights on their hats, and they were out there working pitch dark. And I'm thinking, thank you. That's what I'm thinking. So talk about it. What was the summer like? I'll tell you what. If you just look at the orange cones and the orange barrels and, and, uh, and all that out there, you can see that the highway work is, is in full strength. Um, if our region's going to grow and we're going to put in plants like the cracker plant, 
and we're going to try to do the things that we want to do to grow our region and make it prosperous and have a good future for everyone. We have to have to have a good infrastructure, roads, uh, bridges, the railways, the, the rivers. All those things have to be able to move material and move goods out and do everything that has to happen. So there's going to be some inconvenience. There's going to be some road updating. There's going to be some bridge updating. You know, um, Pennsylvania, I think if I'm not mistaken, and I hope I'm not wrong in my numbers, but we have 25,000 bridges in Pennsylvania. Um, our region has one of the highest uh, amount of bridges in, in our metropolitan area. And those things need maintained, and they haven't been maintained uh, as well as they should have over the years, and it's time to to make it happen and so that we can have this infrastructure available for our manufacturing base. And thanks to PennDOT for all the work that they do throughout the year. And Beaver County, a great place to live. All sorts of wonderful hotels that have gone up. Mr. Betters, our dear friend, recently purchased the Willows Hotel on Route 68 in Industry, an historic place that was built by Mr. George Sendridge, a longtime construction worker and contractor years ago. It's going to be beautiful, a great place to sleep and eat when he gets it all done. If you're going to be here working at that cracker plant, he's got a brand new beautiful condominium union uh, unit going up right at the banks of the beautiful Beaver, Ohio River, that confluence right there in Bridgewater. It really is an exciting time in Beaver County, and really the reason is because of the Shell petrochemical plant. It's a good feeling. When I was out in the parking lot waiting for you to, to come, uh, one of the apprentices I had uh, quite a few years ago, and I always divulge my age, but I'm trying to actually go backwards a you little bit. You look good, man. Oh, thanks, Rob. Thanks Wait till you taste the meatballs here. <laughs> Wait till I take my <laughs> mask off, okay? But uh, he, he texted me and said, hey, how you doing? And, and he says, hey, I'm doing well. I'm working down at, and I said, I said, I'm doing well. And I says, how are you doing, Jim? And he's working down at the, at the plant, and he's taking care of his family, and it's, it's just good to see. Good All right. See. Listen, and then you go across the Ohio River, West Virginia. You're doing a lot of stuff there. I just, I appreciate what you do. Here's what I want you to do for me. Sure. I'm going to talk to Dr. Terry Madonna. You just go in the corner, and then when I ring the bell, and we start talking manufacturing, I want you to come back in, okay? Sure. All right. I love you. Thank you, brother. I love you. Thanks, Thanks for all the things you do for us. Nobody cares more about this region and generations to come like the Carpenters Union. By the way, Lou Gilberti, I have a rocking chair in my house that you're not getting because someday I'm going to use that chair just like you. Have a good night. We'll be back in a couple of minutes.